Yeah, that's Orla Harvey on uh, the bow seat of the Tideway Scholars crew and a hand in the air from Anna Noak in the bow seat of George Herriot's crew. So away they go. Two well-matched quads. It's the Diamond Jubilee Challenge Cup. Junior wins quads and it is uh, George Herriot School on the left and Tideway Scholars School, the distinctive tomato and mustard of Tideway Scholars on the right. Really clean start, both slightly now steering away from the iron, and that's always that temptation that when you don't know the Henley course well, you want to feel the presence of the island, the trees looming over you, and you want to steer away. And that, of course, then made the other crew steer away. But I think they're going to adjust. Really clean, great shot there. Yeah, umpire, I think it was Sarah Winkless there, raising her flag straight in the edge, just sort of warning the crews to stay apart rather than flagging one or the other. Tideway Scullers seem to have got the better of that little bit of steering off the start, moving quite nicely already, really efficient moving. Uh, this early in the race looking strong and efficient, and we look at the Tideway Scullers crew. Alice McCarthy, 17 years old, in the stroke seat, setting a nice long rhythm behind her, Marie Clausen, 18, and Elisa Jans Lofond, uh, 17 at two, and Orla Harvey, uh, at bow and also steering, stroking 37 strokes a minute. It's quite a high stroke rate, but it's quite early in the race. It is. It's looking clean again. We've got great parallel oars there. They're under pressure, Tide Race Scholars. They are moving ahead, but they have not broken yet, and it's looking really quite strong in that George Harriet school crew as well. So I think we saw quite a lot, quite a lot of these athletes have had the opportunity in the women's crews to compete at Henley Women's last week. It's certainly true of George Harriet School. They also achieved a gold in the championship Coxus Falls at Nat Schools Regatta. So, you know, great experience that they've had and they're at 37 strokes a minute as well. Yeah, neck and neck. Well, not quite. Skull is still half a length up, but I'm uh, pleased to see how the Harriet School uh, Junior Women's Quad has responded there. Isla Bathgate stretching the crew out, trying to get the length that you need into this headwind, but also pushing it through, holding on to the finish. That means the blade staying buried and the power being applied right the way through the stroke to try and lift the boat on to the next stroke. You can see how tough this is. These, these are not huge athletes, and so they will really feel that wind on their backs. You can literally feel your oars. You're having to, to push against that in between each stroke to get ready for the next stroke. And again, that creates tension in your forearms sometimes, particularly in, 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 in the sculling yeah. side of the sport. So, you know, again, they'll be learning about how you can keep your forearms relaxed because you've got to keep that power on coming from the legs, relaxing the arms to transmit that. But look at that shot there. Really great parallel oars. It's exactly what you're talking about, Kath, isn't it? You know, relaxed shoulders, relaxed forearms. Uh, we saw the oars going in the water together there from the Tideway Scholars crew, um, nice and composed. But we still have a race on our hands, don't we? Um, because George Herriot's school continues to stay in contention. What a great effort they're doing. Again, they're, they're aware that they're in touch. They're doing, you can see the heads in the boat, focusing on their rhythm. And again, great technique here. Not too much tension in the upper body piling down the legs and the question is how much more can they get out of themselves how much more efficient can they be with that power can they put in any more pushes and a note in the bow sarah haps at two any newton at three isla Bathgate in the george herriot school scores there again they're attacking and i think they're making up some ground well we've often seen in the diamond jubilee challenge cup some pretty impressive racing and we're seeing exactly that here two well-matched crews uh, but also with, you know, perhaps a bit less power um, so than some of the senior athletes against this headwind. It's going to be quite a long haul, this race, and they've got to try to be efficient. They've got to both try to break the other crew while doing it efficiently because it's going to be a long time through the race. And again, here we are riding with Tideway Scholars, continuing to scull really quite neatly. But you can see, well, a bit of fatigue and a bit of strain starting to show on, the, the, on those young faces. What you have to do at the same time as piling in more and more effort as you get tired is start to also assess the technique. What small adjustments can we make just to keep ourselves sharp, just to make sure the blades are covering before we push our legs. And so this is a test really of, of who can think, who can be the smartest down this course to get the most out of the effort that's going in. They are not giving up in that George Herrett School squad. They are chucking in some more efforts. They're trying to take it to Tideway Scholars. Yeah, there we go. We've just have gone through the halfway mark there. Um, and George Herriot School continuing to try and stay hanging on. Also starting to see a little bit of strain and fatigue showing on these young faces as well. So, well, there's everything to play for here. Can they keep their composure? See what they can do with the boat speed through this sort of second, uh, sorry, the third quarter of the race, which is often the decisive stage. There's probably a, uh, exactly a key moment coming now. They've been slightly down for most of the race. 
So they need to do something to create additional momentum that really challenges Tideway Scholars, who've now got used to seeing them there. They've got a length that can feel quite comfortable. Can they do anything? Can they raise it and find another gear in that George Harriet School squad? They have really, that crew has thrown a lot in all the way, but yeah. I think they're creeping ahead now in Tideway Scholars School. I was going to say that, yeah, for my money, I think over the last minute or so, the Tideway Scholars School just had a bit more sort of send on the finish, a bit more of a dynamic push as the blades finish the stroke. And I think that's allowed them to open up a bit of a gap here as we pass the, uh, the Remnant Club, uh, the big club on the bank there, looking at Tideway Scholars School now probably feeling a little bit more confident with the extra distance they've opened up there. Exactly. You see, you know, when they're in contact or just very close to contact, that they're, they're in the same game, they're thinking the same things, we need to do more, how can we improve? And then suddenly they've broken away and now they're in a different sphere each. And Tideway Scholars School, it's right, we've got this, how do we conserve our energy? How do we stay on top? How do we keep our technique really slick? But there's that extra bit of relaxation from feeling in control, whereas now you feel less in, con in control in George Herriot's school. They've yeah. got to be smart. Yeah, the Scholars uh, junior women there have got some good racing behind them in this season. Uh, Alice McCarthy at Stroke and Orla Harvey at Bow were winners of the junior doubles at the Junior Sculling Regatta this year, winners of Girls' Champion doubles at the National Schools Regatta as well. Both raced in the Diamond Jubilee Challenge Cup last year as J16s and that experience counting here as well. So some really class acts and they've got real momentum as well in terms of the winning habit, which is something uh, intangible but really can make a difference when you're under pressure. Absolutely. I think they had that confidence that, you know, right from the start, they kind of just crept ahead and knew they could hang on to that. And now this will feel commanding. Great effort from both crews. Really good technique here. And this is about learning. Actually, it's sort of, you can feel it's rocking about a little bit more now for George Harriet School because it's tiring and they're not getting the, they can't see the crew coming back towards them. It's hard work. They've got to keep heads up technique there it's pretty level they will feel every popple again when you're pushed around and you're down and you're behind you feel it you feel the balance go off it makes you feel more frustrated and when you're ahead you just manage it you glide over the top so this is the 10th year of the diamond jubilee challenge cup we've had the joy of watching junior women's quads and some of the best racing for my mind is uh, is in this event at henley often really really close i think we've had some really great racing here today and uh, this race also with George Herriot School hanging on all the way through, keeping their sculling composed and really pushing it hard. But Tideway Scholars, just I think that momentum from their season, the experience of, of winning in various combinations has stood them in extremely good stead. And they look uh, a little bit quicker on, a little bit neater and a little bit more powerful as we come to the enclosures and the final stages of this race. It's a real determination on Alice McCarthy's face all the way down this track that she knew what was required and she was going to lead her crew to it. Fantastic stroking of that crew. Lots to be confident about for them as they go into the next round. Both responding, both kind of, you know, again, trying to put in everything they can. George Herriot School, they know they have to throw it in. Really cheering and clapping on the banks for them. Not enough for this day. Well, lovely race there. Tideway Scholars School can be rightly pleased with that result. The Diamond Jubilee challenge club as Tideway Scholars School cheer the defeated George Herriot School. Valiant effort by both crews and a really good race. Uh, look forward to seeing Tideway Scholars uh, in the next round.